Right. So let's talk about Russell a, w- a little bit. So okay. Russell has come under fire from the Seahawks for, you know, speaking out against the organization a little bit, uh, letting it be known that his voice hasn't necessarily been heard the way that he felt like it should. And I think Russ is finally showing his true colors. And Mm -hmm. don't take this the wrong way. I think a lot of it comes from his wife, you know, someone who is a celebrity, someone who, who understands the value of maximizing one's brand and, and, you know, also just a strong black woman. More controversy in in his home. I'm not going to get into that. And, and, (laughs) and just somebody, you know, in his ear or yeah, really causing problems. Like, Hey bro, Seattle sucks. And your boss ain't listening to you. Like (laughs) y'all ain't winning Super Bowls. So like, let's get somewhere else. And, I just think he's finally showing us who he truly is because I don't I don't think he's ever been. Oh, go Hawks. There's no way you can be that competitive, you know, and and be this oh go Hawks guy <laughs> in the locker room. No way in hell. It's just like Tom Brady. Everybody thinks Tom Brady's just all golly G with uh cornball. Maybe, but he's more of what we saw in the Super Bowl against Tyron Matthew than what we see in a commercial. Right. Or press conference. I like how you said, like, like you said, you can't be so go Hawks and pro team and be content with being stepped over, you know, by management. And you've been, you won a Super Bowl. You've been the head guy for a long time. You haven't had an MVP vote. Like, it's a lot of things that, that don't, you know, line up with being this ultra competitive guy. Cause Tom Brady's not settling for, for that shit. And he he right did there? he did kind of get stepped on over a little bit in terms of having a say so, but he was also winning at the same time. Mm-hmm. And you know, winning winning is secure to all evil. You know, in 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 sports, you know what I'm saying. And I think on a lesser scale, he's kind of like KD. I don't think he's you know he's not toxic or the villain, but I think he knows that he needs to leave and he'll be embraced wherever he goes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's the, and I'm saying, it, I think it worked both ways for Cam, uh, for Brady. And it's going to end up working for Russ, having the wives who, who see it differently and see that their husband's not being properly appreciated because of their celebrity status and what they do on their own. And they have success without the husband. So they don't necessarily need him. So mm-hmm. when you when you have a situation like this, it's like, hey, wife's not happy. I got to go. I just wish Russ was like this all the time because I just knew that all that other shit was, was, was phony. Right. And you've been saying that. Like, he seems too scripted, too programmed. Yeah. All for the likeness of the public and the, the 12th man. Fuck that be happy for you. You know what I'm saying? It's not like you're a bum trying to, you know what winning the ultimate goal feels like. And if you know that you need X, Y, and Z to continue to do that, or at least put yourself in position to do that. And you're not being listened to, you need to go. Like you need to go. And for the people who push back on Russ wanting to leave saying, Oh, Seattle's just a couple pieces away. It, it's, it's Yeah. But just like you said with the KD thing is, it's also a style element to it. Mm -hmm. Russ is tired of handing the ball off two plays, two plays, then throw it deep to DK over the top. He wants to play a more revolutionized style of football. He wants to have the ball in his hands more and more responsibility on him. So it's not just the the front office piece and the poor offensive line play. It's also the style of play. And then again – Throw in his wife not wanting to be in Seattle. It's like, yeah, bro, get me the fuck out of here. And it's and okay. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm pretty sure he would like to run the ball because he wants to, not because he has to. Like, they were slinging his ass uh, last season. And I think over the course of his nine years, he's close to 500. Like, that's wild. And he's not a big guy. Like, they're really slinging his ass. Having fun out there with him. And get him some help. Yeah, no, did you listen to Greg Olson on um Cowherd's podcast? I did not. 
I didn't so, finish. I, I, I listened, but I didn't finish. So he talked a little, a little bit about Russ, and he talked about how important Russ's legacy is for him. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's Russ being selfish, or, or is it just a realization that the better my legacy is, the better the results end up being for my team, so they go hand in hand? They go hand in hand. I mean, how you could – spin that on a lot of different players who look out for themselves first, you know, because on the flip side as management, you might still have juice in the tank, but you're not in the plans. And I mean, you might, it could come down to age. It could come off of, Oh, you had a down year in production, even though you know you're capable of doing, you know, this and that, you know, you have to look out for yourself. Just like working a job, you're replaceable. You know what I'm saying? If you're unhappy, you need to be like, you need a day, skip that job. Like look out for you first. You know what I'm saying? It can't always be about money. I mean, you say replaceable, though, and Dallas showed us that quarterbacks aren't replaceable because they (laughs) gave Dak everything he wanted after Dak is coming off of an injury. Well, they're replaceable. They're just not – you can't replicate what that guy you're replacing can do. That's the difference. You can be replaced. So if you're Pete Carroll in Seattle, Mm -hmm. what are you doing? Well, obviously not listening to Russell because give a damn about what he's talking about. No, I'm saying if you were in that seat, what would you do at? Um, I don't – I mean, I feel like it's too late to try to patch things up. So you got to act quick and move. Otherwise, you're going to be like Dallas or New England. You're going to be stuck, like, in this hole. Like, we're getting closer to the draft. You can either spend some money or you can try to find the next best thing on a cheaper contract because we've seen in the past uh, players that are winning Super Bowls, They've been on rookie contracts. Yeah. At least in the last, like, decade, 10, 12 years, only players not. I think Eli I think Eli won his first on his rookie contract. Obviously, we know what Tom Brady's done, Mahomes, um, and the players who have gotten there to the playoffs. And even just uh, those championship games, a lot of the different steps to get there, all rookie contracts. So it's all about finding that balance. You don't want to overspend because, as you know, we've seen Brady, Mr. Cheap, you, you, the less you take, the more you can make around you. If that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and you see, he just he just restructured and get and gave him 19 million in cap relief today. Yep, um, yep. And I'll tell you where I struggle with that money piece is it's hard for me to tell somebody to take less money, and especially if you feel like you're good and worth it. I'm with you on that. Right, and it, and everyone's not in the situation of Brady with the other outside interests, with the wife, her money, to be able to be like, yeah, I don't need this. Like, you can restructure my contract so that I can uh, get more talent around me. Right. I'm not going to tell somebody to take less. I'm just going to say you know what comes with taking less or with taking less and what comes with taking more. Mm-hmm. Know your worth. Is that what they say? Know your worth. 